Welcome to Agriculture Academy. In today's video we are going to take a look at aquaponics. What is aquaponics? How does it work? What do you need to get started? All of these questions are going to be answered in this video. Stick around until the end of the video for some top tips on getting started in aquaponics, as well as your own copy of our aquaponic ebook. Before we begin, we want to thank you for supporting our channel and choosing to watch our content. If you would like more information on all things agriculture, remember to subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get started by answering the question, what is aquaponics? In a nutshell, the name says it all. Aqua means water and ponics means to work, or grow. So basically, aquaponics is a method of growing plants in water and using this as a habitat for rearing fish too. By growing plants and raising fish aquaponically, you take advantage of the best of both hydroponics and aquaculture. In hydroponics, you are merely growing your plants in water which most often gets pumped out the system. In aquaculture, toxic nutrient accumulation from the fish, fish food and fish waste means the water also needs to be constantly siphoned off and replaced with a clean supply. However, both these problems are solved in a mutually beneficial way in aquaponics. Not only is water saved through the continuous cycling from the fish, to the plants, and back to the fish again, but the plants are able to use up the toxic nutrients making the recycled water safe for the fish again. Now that we have defined aquaponics, we need to understand how the process works. There is one process at the core of the system upon which everything depends. This process is the nitrogen cycle. If you remember, we mentioned that by placing plants into the system they clean the water and make it safe for the fish again. The nitrogen cycle makes this all possible. It all starts with ammonia. Ammonia is a waste product from the respiratory cycle of the fish, as well as decomposing fish food and fish waste. When ammonia accumulates in high concentrations, it becomes toxic to the fish. On every dark, wet surface in the aquaponics system exist nitrifying bacteria known as nitrosomonas. These are naturally occurring and extremely beneficial because they convert the ammonia to nitrite, Unfortunately, nitrite is even more toxic to the fish than ammonia. Luckily, there is another class of bacteria called nitrobacter, which convert the nitrites to nitrates. And this is fantastic because nitrates are a great nutrient source for the plants. So, as you can see, the nitrogen cycle is an extremely important process that converts toxic waste products into less toxic nutrients that the plants can use. Now that the importance of the nitrogen cycle and the beneficial bacteria have been made clear, we are going to highlight the role of something called a biofilter. Biofilters can be made of any inorganic substance, like gravel or a hydroponic substrate for example, and are included in an aquaponics system to provide a place for the beneficial bacteria to live and proliferate. The biofilters provide a large, dark and wet surface area on which the nitrosomonas and nitrobacter survive. Water from the fish tanks is pumped through these biofilters, the ammonia gets converted to usable nitrates, the water then goes to the plant tanks, the nitrates are used, and the water is now safe to return to the fish tanks. If you are feeling inspired to start your own aquaponic endeavor, then you are going to need some important equipment to get started. We are going to list the most basic products that you can use to build a simple system, perfect if you are a beginner. First of all, you will need a fish tank. This can be made from a variety of materials, like stainless steel, lined wood or plastic. The size of the container will depend on how many fish you are wanting to stock. Secondly, you will need some media beds which you will use to grow your plants in. Media beds can be made from similar materials to the biofilter, like gravel or a hydroponic substrate. If you are thinking of growing your plants on floating trays, then you will also need some raft beds. Whilst your media beds can serve the same purpose as a biofilter, you may wish to include a separate system into your design if you have the space and resources to do so. In order to circulate water throughout the system, you will need water pumps. In order for these to work, you are going to need to connect them to an electrical system. This can come from the grid, or be solar, depending on your preferences. If you live in very hot or cold regions, then you may also want to invest in water heaters or coolers to warm the water in the winter and cool it in the summer. And that is aquaponics in a nutshell. As promised, we have some top tips for those of you who are still tuned in. Tip number one, start small. If you have little to no experience in aquaponics, rather start with a small system and expand as your experience and confidence progresses. Tip number two, choose your plant and fish wisely. 
If you are wondering which species is best for you, first take a look at those that grow best in your climate. Trying to rear cool water fish in tropical areas can be quite difficult and increase the costs of cooling the water. It is also important to use complementary fish and plant species. Tip number three, test your water regularly. Fish are extremely sensitive to nutrient and pH fluctuations. It is therefore important to take daily or at least weekly water readings. You can purchase simple, cheap kits online or from aquaponics stores. And that brings us to the end of this introductory video to aquaponics, we hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. You can also find your own copy of our aquaponic ebook in the description. Thank you for watching, we look forward to seeing you next time.